What is up guys, here from the Sam Madden YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at my round two matchup in Friday Night Football 88. This one going up against Trey Thomas. But before we get into the video, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Also make sure you guys take the time to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads coming your way here on the Sam Madden YouTube channel. If you guys wanna take your game to the next level, Madden 21, check out my strategy site, gridirongameplans.gg. Gridiron Game Plans is your one-stop source for all things competitive Madden. Every week in our Vault Update, we take a look at the meta, or the most effective tactics available, being used by pro players on the MCS circuit, breaking down not only how and why the pros do what they do, but most importantly, how you can counter those metas when you face them in online head-to-head -head gameplay. On top of that, your subscription also includes any and every offensive and defensive game plan released on the website while your subscription is active. So head over to gridirongameplans.gg, $9.95 per month unlocks the entire website and you can opt out at any time. Okay, guys, without further ado, let's get into this one. This is my round two matchup, Friday Night Football 88 from mutthead.com. This is a $1,000 tournament that is on the Mutthead TV Twitch channel every single week. This week, it was on a Wednesday due to the club series. So uh, I was able to win my first round matchup against Slim Ghost. I did a commentary about that game yesterday. You guys can check the link in the description for that one. Now, this one is a little bit different in that we're going to be taking a look at the tape and talking about what I did and didn't really do very well in this ball game. I think it's always great to look at tape after a win and see what you did well. It's equally as important to take a look at the tape after a loss, especially after a loss to a really, really good player like Trey. Um, if you guys don't know who Trey is, I'm gonna put his social links in the description as well. He streams, he's a great comp player, part of the Need It gaming crew. Uh, and he runs a really, really good bunch offense. And, uh, you know, I, Bashed myself to be a pretty good defensive player against Bunch, also against Trips tight end, as you guys kind of saw yesterday in the in the commentary. But uh, Trey's a little bit different, as you see right here. But you guys know how I am with that Mama Said Zone knockout meta. We get Richard Sherman with the interception right there from his zone, and we are taking over on offense to start the game here. So um, obviously, I'm riding high, coming off my first round win against Slim. Uh, really played lockdown defense the entire game, had no issues, and definitely feeling myself there after that uh, interception of Trey. You saw right there, he tried to go to the playmaker. Uh, didn't actually have a playmaker player there at that spot. I'm not sure if that was on purpose or not, but uh, he was trying to squeeze that throw over the top of Sherman. And I'm a big believer in my flat zone players being very, very tall. You'll notice that the way I have my roster constructed, I've got Richard Sherman in the nickel. He's six foot three. That is the Richard uh, Sherman limited item, that full power up team of the week edition uh, that is out. Uh, pretty pricey card. Uh, fortunately, my guy Cole 45 was uh, willing to loan him to me to finish my power up. So I wasn't rocking with the uh, basically the powered up version of the Halloween item. Uh, and he came through and made that play. My other flat player on the opposite side of Sherman is uh, Calvin Johnson out of position, who's 6'5", and he also has uh, abilities to make him play better in zone as well. So if you guys are interested in that zone knockout meta, I have it completely broken down on the website in the vault updates over the last month. So right here, I started off the game, and I gotta admit, this was, a, uh, this was actually kind of a fluky call. I had the wrong package, caught him in the double A gap, and uh, as I look back on that exact call right there, I regret I regret very much that I actually did not go back to that the entire rest of the game. If you guys remember yesterday's commentary, I talked about how Slim Ghost ran the ball early in his game against me with Barry Sanders for a gain of, I think, eight. And I didn't really have bodies near the ball carry. He got to the edge very, very easily. And I said that it was really bad that he didn't go back to that run the entire game until basically the game was out of control and he couldn't even afford to audible down due to the fact that there wasn't very much time left in the game. Now, if you're wondering about all the pausing right now, uh, what ended up happening is my packages disappeared. Uh, there are some bunch players that do the right bumper subs where they just sub guys left and right. I like to use the wide receiver flip package to keep one guy as the solo receiver and another guy as my outside bunch receiver. And uh, you'll notice that my my abilities, dis or, I'm sorry, not my abilities, but my packages disappeared. If you actually look at my play call menu here, when we hit resume, you're gonna see that it's not there. I'm actually flicking the stick back and forth to try to get the packages to work. And there's actually nothing there, it just says subs and uh, 
not able to do anything. You see, I'm like looking at other formations to see if it's broken the same way. But you see that my players are moving around. So I kind of just had to look at my numbers, make sure my 21 and my 14 were in the correct spots uh, to, to use the correct packages. So anywho, we're back here, second and four. I go to the motion that I used against Slim. I read man coverage right here. So I went ahead and went with my little manipulation that got me a couple scores against uh, Slim. And I go up top and DK Metcalf is able to get right behind Woodson and I'm on the board early. So this game starts off very similar to the game against Slim Ghost where I get a quick interception or a quick turnover uh, and I'm able to convert quickly into points. So up initially seven, nothing feeling pretty good about myself. Um, you know, I know that Trey's going to come back guns blazing that last interception. It wasn't like the guy wouldn't have been open. Had he playmaker sooner, the route combination, the route distribution was good. So it wasn't the same feeling that I had against slim. Typically when you box somebody, you know, three plays in a row and they punt to you, that's a little bit different than somebody making a bad read and throwing you an interception. And you're like, oh man, he had somebody open. So um, I am feeling good, but I'm not feeling overly confident at this point. I, I just want to make sure that I'm I'm playing sound defense and staying true to my alignment. So uh, you'll notice right here that I've got the three X factors. All of them have the uh, the the shutdown that zone ability, uh, where if they get an interception, they enter the zone and they're really really tough to throw on. So Trey here on the second drive goes right back to that drag. That's the exact route combo he ran on the interception play, but he he playmaker that drag up the field into the interception. That time he checks it down in between the zones over the middle for a gain of nine. And I think that's the thing that sets good players apart from, uh, you know, great players is your ability to uh, take your check downs, take what's given. You'll notice in the, in the take from yesterday, I'm willing to give a lot of players the flat. You know, if you're willing to take six yards in the flat on a table route, I will give it to you. But there's just so many players out there that get bored of taking their check downs. And to me, putting points on the board is not boring. Uh, you know, people like to do it with style, and I think you can use that tendency against them. So you see right here, I'm on auto flip, and Trey realizes that, so he's playing the flip flip game. The other benefits of using the flip flip game a bunch is that you can, if you have a hot route master, get specific routes uh, on the solo receiver by using them as a compressed receiver first, and then flipping it so they go out to the outside, and they keep that hot route that you put on them. So in that example, number 14 could be on any number of routes. It could be on outside routes, or it could be on, you know, for instance, a slot route. Uh, right here, it's on a drag. And Trey goes to a little uh, short baby out. This is actually an out route that's in the play tight end hook. That's not the same out route that I run or the corner route that I run and clear out. You see right here, he audibles down into, not really down, but he audibles into the trips tight end inside zone. I shoot the gap cleanly. And uh, I do have secure tackler on Matthew. I had one AP left to kind of play with here in this game. And I uh, went ahead and put that on them just in case. Wanted to make uh, the tackles in open space. I know that Trey took his check downs a lot. So that was part of the reason I was using that. Here, just another great route combo. He goes to the post over the middle. Really good low ball right there. If he had thrown a regular bullet pass or tried to throw it over the top of that zone drop, he ended up he would have ended up getting intercepted again. So great play there by Trey. Second down in inches here. Again, bunch to the wide side. His pace is really, really good. You notice that he's not slow. Here he motions back in and then goes back out to throw the motion wheel. That's a little bit of a trick that people use in bunch. Uh, not a lot of players that aren't pro players use that trick, but if you motion the wheel out, then in, then out again, it actually allows you to motion snap it. So that's the way that a lot of pro players avoid uh, not being able to snap a wheel to the outside. Here he goes right back to Z spot. I don't think he trusted his read right there. I think if he stays in the pocket, steps up, he could have fit the corner out over the top of my zone drop. But after throwing the interception on his first drive, maybe he's a little bit gun shy, doesn't want the game to get away from him. He's in scoring range right here. And uh, it's not like my touchdown throw wasn't, you know, a tight window. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where maybe he's thinking to himself, let's just go ahead and stem the tide. Here, bad read though. Uh, he goes to mesh post, I bait the hitch, and then I go back to the post route. Uh, that was an easy lurk, you know. Uh, I think early on, Trey um, was trying to feel me out running some meta bunch and Obviously, that's what I'm good against. I, I do a lot of my labbing against the meta, as you guys know, on Gridiron. So, you know, you're going to have to show me something a little bit different, which obviously Trey does have different, uh, you know, different, you know, reads and, and, and route combinations that he runs. You'll notice in this game that I did like to run Bo Jackson on the base. I was having pretty good success with this. Um, I really think that I probably could have afforded to stay in this more. Again, very similar to my first play of of uh, the game where I hit that inside zone split out of deuce close. That was more of an accident because I had two tight ends on the field, but um, 
you know, I kind of wish I would have gone to that maybe a little bit more against Trey. Trey lived in this uh, this double A gap. He really wanted to pressure me. He really wanted to uh, play man coverage. You see that he's got man coverage abilities on the field. You know, he's mugging gaps. Here, I'm getting uh, another motion. I'm trying to get a read for that motion. So again, he shows me man coverage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to do the exact same thing I did on the previous drive, cause a little bit of a misalignment. I snap the ball. I go up top to Dion, and I think maybe if I didn't get the throw out of sack, I might have been able to fit that in uh, and gone up 14-0. I think that was the biggest play in the game. I think that from this point forward, the, the tide turned and that I, I was maybe a little bit gun shy. But I think if maybe I step into that throw, maybe I just get a clean gunslinger throw with Gannon. I end up throwing that over the top, and maybe we're talking about a completely different game. But I gave Trey life, and uh, here he goes. He goes right back underneath. You notice that in the previous uh, drive, he he wasn't taking uh, that that check down. He threw that post on mesh post. This time he goes to a different set, you know, a different setup where he has a slant with a hitch. Uh, it gives me a lot to worry about underneath. Again, right here, that that post route that he's running, uh, again, giving me trouble. So a lot of players love to, you know, run crossers from the tight end spot. Uh, the flat post to the, the point man is something that you definitely have to look out for. Here again, he goes to flood back of the end zone and he gets cheated, didn't get two feet in. Good read right there in the back of the end zone to Arian Foster, uh, but unrewarded with that read. So again, here, I'm trying to set up more of like a, a you know, a red zone defense. This time I'm cognizant of that route. And I, you know, I decide to send a player, trying to get to the quarterback. And fortunately for me, JJ Watt from that spy I sent him, he sheds that center and gets the sack. So third down and 17, basically third and goal uh, in this spot. I'm thinking, you know, just point prevention. Let's go ahead and make him take his three. Uh, see if we can, uh, you know, hold on to our lead right now. I snap the ball or I uh, run a lot of cover four out of this 335 right here. Again, good defense against Flood. I have somebody along the outline for the bunch side and I have somebody along the inline for the backside solo dig right there. So force him to take his check down. And I'm content with that. You know, I turned the ball over on a throw out of sack. Uh, could have been anywhere from 14 nothing uh, to 7-7. Seven, seven. And, uh, you know, I'll take I'll take 7-3 to three after that turn of events there. So the throw out of sack only cost me three points. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know, uh, he gave up the one play score with the man coverage misalignment on my first drive. I maybe underthrew that touchdown because of the throw out of the sack on the second drive. You know, I, I feel okay. I definitely feel okay. Um, you know, I just maybe fell in love a little bit too much with that motion snap concept. Uh, is kind of the way that I'm thinking. Right here, I'm in between the hashes. We talked about this yesterday. Bunch players oftentimes uh, try to... Uh, you know, try to get to one hash or the other. Here, I go ahead and I run the base. Again, you see that I had good room to the outside. I really thought he was going to click onto a safety. I tried to swerve back to the inside and uh, the safety was able to get the angle and tackle me. I thought that I had a touchdown right there if he had just clicked on, but good, good play by him. Again, he's showing me that double A gap look. I have to respect that. You know, I go with my, my motion here, trying to get a man covered zone coverage tell. Right here, I'm going to a setup looking for the press animation. He shades over the top. So now I just have to play maker Dion back across. Uh, that play was more of a setup to try to beat press. I wanted DK Metcalf on his streak on the left to try to beat press. I wanted Randy Moss on that smart routed corner to try to work to press over the top to the outside right. And then I'm able to work the middle with that playmaker. So again, sticking in that double A gap defense here. Uh, and I'm going to go to the to the base. Uh, it looks at least like I'm audibling the base right here. Maybe some fake hot routes to try to keep him. Nope, actually, I did snap the ball. And uh, right here, you know, I, I tried to take a shot. I tried to take a shot. And I think that maybe one of the problems that I had is that, uh, you know, the day before, even earlier that morning, I was playing with a Seattle theme team, a 50 out of 50 theme team, in which that DK Metcalf is a little bit better. And that double move was actually cooking man coverage. Uh, and getting really smooth cuts out of that. So I thought that I was going to take the shot right there, but there really is a difference between 98 and 99 speed right there. So again, looking for that man zone tell, uh, motion DK across the formation, going back to that motion concept. And I'm just stupid. I'm just stupid right here. I threw the slant over the middle. I'll say this because I said it in chat after the game. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to playmaker him either up or left. And my my thumbs did something different. I, I pressed the icon of the receiver before playmakering him. 
it was definitely wide open. Either of those playmaker leads was open and I did neither of them and just pressed the button either way. So, uh, you know, really, really bad decision by me right there. Maybe a little bit rattled by the pressure from the drive previous when I threw a sack for an interception. But, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to deal with pressure and competitive Madden. And I didn't handle that very well right there. Um, you know, sometimes your your muscle memory just goes out the window. You know, for instance, I was watching last night on the club series and uh, Fancy tried to sell that game against uh, he tried to sell that game against Goes where he was up late and he was just going to punt the ball out of bounds and it was going to be ball game. But he punted it out of bounds with one second left and it was actually in field goal range for Goes to tie the game. They're just little mistakes people make uh, pressing the wrong button, you know, not angling your kick far enough. Right here, I tried to go to a little uh, bluff blitz around the edge. I thought he was going to run the PA boot over and try to roll out and throw the tight end delay fade. Uh, so I kept him in the pocket and he made a good he made a good read right there. So again, Trey showing why he is a very well respected uh, player in this community, one of the top competitive players out there. Uh, and right here it goes to the inside zone. I played the inside zone very very well. This three three five stack where I pinch my defense does a fantastic job against inside zone from bunch tight end and also. Uh, trips tight end type set so you see right here that i'm i'm stopping it right here i don't think he's going to run the ball uh so I, I stick with my edge rush and he's just got good route combos he goes to the end zone and he's gonna drop it that's the benefit of the, the zone knockout meta man it really is you get those uh 10 to 20 yard areas on the sidelines and if they catch the ball in that area and they're hit they're gonna drop it so right there probably something that plays to my advantage as trey being a comp guy is going up against mostly one step ahead man coverage heavy blitz meta Throwing the ball on the on the zone knockout meta is different. Things that you think are open as reads really aren't. And that's kind of the mastery that I try to teach with this uh, zone knockout. Here I go to a double Mabel setup over the middle uh, and he just makes a good playmaker and dumps it down in the flat. That was a smart read right there. Again, you know, one of those players where I wanna make sure that you are going to take your check down every single time. And you can see in the way that he's running his progressions that he is not super interested in taking his check downs every time. Now, right here, this is where I have to realize right away that uh, Trey has something. He has something for that. He goes to the little power out of the strong uh, RPO, um, that little power RPO out of strong H wing, and uh, is able to pick up decent yardage right there. But he had a ton of room to pound that in. Right here, he goes goal line. So I decided to go to a goal line defense myself. I'm thinking fullback dive. So I go to the 60 out jacks, which was a video that I broke down here on the channel, I think last week or the week before. Uh, he motions across and he runs the fullback dive and we were able to plug it. So as de as designed right there, I put content that I actually run on the YouTube channel. So uh, you see right there, we're able to uh, practice what we preach and get the stop. So here on third and goal, I'm thinking, okay, another huge play right here. I could get myself into, uh, you know, a, a chance to uh, hold my lead. And, and unfortunately, I didn't. He went right back to the counter. So again, showing why Trey is a true competitive player, knowing the counter to the counter meta. Um, fullback dive is a problem. You create a counter meta to the fullback dive. And then he knows that the power O is the answer to that. So A beats B, B beats C. And, you know, he, he right there, he called C. So, or I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> he called uh, C beats B rather. <laughs> he called C right there. So here though, this is the play of the game. He goes to a squib kick. And I just remembered from the Decroft game last year that if you get the squib kick, veer it out to the right. And that's exactly what I do with Derrick Henry. I swerve the kicker back to the inside and I go up 14-10. And I'll tell you what's going through my mind right here in this spot. I'm thinking to myself, okay, that's the play you needed. You needed a, a special team score. You needed a defensive turnover, a fumble six, a pick six to stay in this game against uh, Trey. And that is exactly what the doctor ordered right there. And I'm thinking to myself, hey man, I am super fortunate to be in this game. He made an ugly mistake early that put me in scoring range. Uh, I was able to capitalize on that, turn it into seven. And then obviously this big kick return with ball coming out at half. I'm thinking, man, I've got to put him away right here. This is the spot in the game that I have to be able to convert. I have to be able to put this player away in this spot. So that's the number one thing on my mind. I'm also thinking to myself, you know, I kind of screwed up. I uh, had the throttle sack that could have been a touchdown. I didn't play maker. That was my fault. You know, self-inflicted wounds, basically, uh, thus far in the game. You know, he's played good defense. Uh, pressure bursts pipes. It gives you opportunities to create turnovers, and that's the way he plays his defense. But I have not operated the way that I know I can at this point either. 
So starting off here on the right hash bunch to the left side, I'm motion Metcalf across. This time I notice he's doing more of a alignment by either speed or depth chart because he has a guy follow. There's no swap off. So I go to the base and right there, just a good click on. He clicks onto Ted Hendricks, dives down in front of my feet and trips up Bo Jackson. So right here, I think that's where I started to shy away from the base. No, I'd picked up big yardage, had potential huge home run threat type runs with the base the first two times. It failed me right there, and I thought to myself, okay, let's ditch it. Go back to my man zone read motion, Moss across this time, trying to get a speed advantage. And uh, I go back to that setup. And again, stop trying to test, stop time trying to test the in the zone player. Right there, I tried to test uh, Rod Woods and go up top. You know, I'm playing again. Randy Moss has 98 speed. If I were full theme team, 99 speed, that's going to be a touchdown. But uh, you see right there, I'm not trying to say that my team is an excuse, uh, but I'm definitely not running a full theme team. I'm not even running a 25 to get plus one speed on any of my players. Uh, and a lot of these pro players are. A lot of them are running Washington secondary or Raiders theme team. Uh, and that gives them that extra speed to keep all their main coverage defenders at 99. So I do struggle a fair amount with this team beating man to man. Whereas, you know, if I had that 99 speed, um, like I was playing with that Seattle theme team I mentioned earlier about Metcalf, it's a completely different world. It really truly is a completely different world. Um, you know, I believe that this year, this is the, really the first year ever that you're talking about God squads, not actually being God squads. A theme team to me is more of something I would prefer to a god squad here i decided to go to a double move no little motion fade and he actually uh colored out his defense right there he went to uh you know a bailout mixed in zone with a man and i didn't have the reads there so great defense by him i've got a punt huge defensive stop right here to stem the tie that that kick return if i put points on the board right there coming out of half to go up 21 10 um i i feel like i would have been in a good spot again you notice that his red zone drives were were a struggle um and you know, I've made him work so far. I've definitely made him work. But now in my mind, I'm starting to think to myself, like, man, you haven't scored really since the first quarter after his turnover. You got a, a Boston covers you lobbed over the top. He's pretty well got me boxed right now. Pretty well got me boxed. I'm thinking to myself, now the pressure's on my defense. And this is the player that I've always been as a competitive guy. Um, you guys have always known me as a player that when I when I lose a game, let's say I lose a game 10 to 9. I think to myself, how can I win that game nine to seven? I don't think, what did my offense do wrong? Uh, right here again, good zone cover setup. I, I'm, I'm staying strong, um, you know, it, it, but still in the back of my mind, it's taking up some headspace that I've got to figure out what I can do to try to put points on the board because I'm probably, even though I'm a good defensive player, I'm probably not going to hold Trey to 10. Here he audibles into the Trey Y flex, and I knew Dagger was coming, and this is, uh, uh, in terms of this formation, it's inside zone and Dagger for Trey. I've watched him a fair amount. Um, you know, I feel like I've got good inside zone defense out of this, this setup. Uh, he's able to pick up the first down right there, though. Now he goes back to bunch, um, and then trips tight end. So right here, I'm thinking he's in between the hashes. He doesn't want to be here. This time, he actually snaps the ball and catches me out of position. I did bait his uh, tight end delay fade. He wasn't prepared to take his check down. So again, these are things I'm logging mentally. How often does he glance off of his check down in the flat? Because again, I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to give you six yards underneath in the flat. If you want it, you can have it. So here we go. He audibles into that Trey Y flex again in between the hash marks. I'm expecting inside zone this time. But we stop it pretty well. Um, had I been a little bit quicker on my setup, I would have walked my safety down even further. Probably only picks up two or three on that. Now he's a bunch to the short side. I'm expecting him to flip it. That's exactly what he does. Now he's sitting here in third and five. I know he's not going to run here. I know this is dagger. I bait it so well. Crosser. And then I don't peel back to the drag. Right there, if you look at that replay, I went through the entire progression. Flashed the tight end drag. Went back to the crosser, but you notice that I had a sideline zone ready for that crosser. That crosser was never open and I never came off of it. I never came off of it. I knew in the back of my head that was the progression, drag to crosser to dig. And I didn't come back to the dig for some reason. And uh, that's huge, that's huge because that ends up being to me probably my worst defensive play of the game. Um, kind of the equivalent of me in the first half throwing the slant for an interception, but I knew I wanted to playmaker it. It's just like, okay, well, why didn't you do it? Uh, that's exactly what I did. I, why didn't I bait the bait the dig? I knew what the play was, but I didn't bait it. And, you know, that was huge because that was a three-point, or actually technically a four-point play. 
Because if I get that stop, maybe even interception, if he throws that dig to me, maybe it's zero points. Maybe it's back the other direction. Um, but either way here, he's got a third down and goal from the four. And he goes into strong wing. And, and what do I do? I basically, I, I kind of panic. I go and I set my zone depths. I set them down to like zero on the flats. I want my purple zones on the side to, to really set that hard edge on a zero yard assignment. And I think four, four, let's just try four, four, see if I can get him to, to, you know, screw this up. So then I try to shoot the gap. I get the sheds just a little bit too late. And Bo Jackson walks in for a touchdown. And I'm thinking to myself here, oh man, <laughs> right here, this is trouble. You know, I, again, I haven't scored since my first offensive play of the game, basically. And I have that fluky kick return with my, my fullback on the squib kick, you know, kind of a one in a million thing that happened there. And I'm down 17, 14. I mean, you, this could easily be a blowout. I mean, this is, this is why I want to go back and look at what I did wrong. As I look at this, you know, it was just, I think to me it was game management. You, you know, you look back at this game, I did not run the base enough. I gave up on it after that one dive tackle that got the shed. Uh, it was a nice play, but I totally didn't run the ball the way that I probably should have to keep him honest. So here I go. You know, I'm, I'm down 17, 14 now. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I've, I've got to get going. So I'm starting to press a little bit. And I know that you guys have felt this before too. Again, I go back to the base right here and he stops it. So now I'm starting to really doubt it. It's like, okay, he the, my last two bases have gone for basically negative one yards. If you think about the, the yardage that I've gotten, he's got a guy in the zone with Acrobat, deep knockout, and and the, the one step ahead. I basically can't throw at Rod Woodson. And I'm starting to try to ad lib. I'm going to look right here for a double move and he brings pressure. I had to throw it away. And now I'm grumbling. It is all cascading on me right there as I throw the ball away. I had nothing in the flat, uh, and now I'm in third and 18. So here in my mind, I'm thinking, what do you do on the last situation where I wanted to load up? You know, he dropped the coverage on the last uh, time I tried to, you know, max protect. So I'm thinking to myself right here, you know, let's let's maybe try to get a decent chunk of this back. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get all 18 back most likely, but if we can space the field pretty well, give myself some availability underneath, that might be open. So you see right here, I'm going back to my playmaker setup, you know, but this time we're keeping the, the tight end of the flat and he colored the field again. And I just didn't have, I didn't have what I needed right there. Uh, good setup once again by him on third and long. And I'm in a spot where I've got a punt. I can't, I literally cannot do anything with this. Like if I, if I decide to go for this, that's, basically guaranteeing ball game. I've been uh, kind of a bend but don't break style on defense the entire game. Offense isn't moving. I've got to hope that his impatience, his unwillingness to take his checkdowns that he has shown so far in this game is the reason that I have a chance to win. So it's just preservation of life at this point for me as we enter the fourth quarter. So now he's coming back out in the gun bunch. One of the things that works in my, my favor is, uh, you know, Trey really only runs the ball when it's a goal line to go or like a third in inches or a fourth in inches to preserve a drive scenario. He's not the type that's going to milk you running the ball. So I'm thinking, okay, we got life. Again, right here, you see that he didn't really have much. Uh, he misses he misses his check down on the right sideline. I had the deeper route covered uh, and he just didn't take it until it bounced up the field. So again, kind of showing that he's not, he's not super big on, you know, taking the check down. You know, he's the type of player that's a, uh, he plays with emotion. You know, he wants to he wants to, to big play you. Here, he goes right back to that, that route combo that beat me in the first half, the motion wheel with the post and the drag underneath. Another great route combination right there to hold my user accountable in the middle of the field. And uh, just kind of showing, you know, he's doing some things that a lot of other players don't do in bunch with, the, with that vertical setup. Here, I was baiting the angle route. I promise you I was, but right there, looking back at it, I got to click on and make that play. I, I knew that he was going to run an angle route, so I manned up the running back, and uh, J.J. Watt's right there, and he actually has the catch rating. That's one of the reasons I do play J.J. Watt at my nose tackle. He and Montez Sweat, depending on what quarterback you have, both can either spy, you know, uh, J.J. can cover a running back angle. You click on and catch it because he's got a good catch rating, uh, and there I just, again, a little bit slow, much like, you know, uh, early in the game when I threw the slant. Again, just not... In the pressure situation, pressing the buttons that I need to press in the order I need to press them and get stops. So right here, I know I'm in trouble. I go back to the original defense and he just gets outside on me. Bo Jackson is basically all over at this point. You know, I, I haven't moved. I have no scores. I'm in a bag. And, uh, you know, he's really pouring it on. And not that I've taken my checkdowns 
at all in this game. Not that I've really made checkdowns available because I'm always afraid of the, the seven man rush. But you have to keep in the back of your mind that I can't really throw the ball quick to the running back out in the flat. I can't really afford to throw the quick throws to the tight end now down by two possessions with one timeout wasted in the second half now and down by two scores. So I have to I have to preserve timeouts and I have to really get going. So, you know, when you look back at tape and you try to think, why did I get flooded? For me personally, there's two reasons. Trey is the better player for one. And two, I did not manage the game nearly the way that I should have. I fell in love with the deep shot, especially after that first touchdown. And um, I didn't make him respect the, to the totality of the offense. If you look at the game yesterday, I made Slim Ghost really respect everything that I was doing. I was taking checkdowns. I was throwing the ball uh, in the flats. I was doing a number of things. Right here, I tried to just find something, big play. And it, I do exactly what I told you I shouldn't do right there. Stole the ball to the running back. You know, that's minus five and 30 seconds down by 10. And now I'm second down to 15. Just an absolute clinic defensively by Trey right here. So again, now I'm looking for the big play, you know, motion across. I see the man follow, uh, but this time I snapped the ball. You know, I'm trying to try, try to change my tempo a little bit. And then you see what I did right there. I just butchered my double move on the outside. I mean, I right there, I, I'm just, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a spot where uh, it's over. It's definitely over. So right here, I, I go ahead, I go back to the just chatting and I uh, I say GG's to Trey. You know, it was, a, it was a fantastic game. I did learn a lot about what I need to do uh, going forward. I hope that I'm going to be back in Friday Night Football. I really enjoy uh, playing and locking in for these games. It's not often that I get to. Um, but, you know, it was a great game against a great player and there's, there's things you can take from a loss. So I hope that you guys enjoyed me kind of going through uh, a tough game for myself. You know, I think that it's important to always uh, reflect and, and figure out where you can be better. Um, you know, a lot of YouTubers don't post losses. Um, and I know I don't do a, a ton of commentaries either on the channel, but it's always good to look at a game where you, uh, you don't play up to your best and you play against somebody who, who does play at a, at a really high level. Um, I'm sure there's some things that Trey would take back from that game as well, but, uh, you know, I really enjoyed it and I hope you guys are enjoying these series as well, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and sign it off here. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, drop those below. Subscribe to the channel. Check me out on great on gameplans.gg, even though the offense didn't look so great in that game. We'll see you guys in our next video upload. Until then, this is Ann. Get the lab in. Good luck.